ears. I don't remember that part. But I said, Chad, you have a spirit of poverty? I mean, he was so shocked. And he, because he wouldn't think he had a spirit of poverty. And I said, you take that woman's money. So he did. And so during the service, I just felt we should stop. And, you know, I asked for that little, the, what she had brought. And I said, we're going to give to this, these people that gave everything. And God's going to give them jobs. They had walked out of that building with $18,000. And the next week, they both had jobs. Amen. <laughs> Then he does something for us. Mike and I, we were talking in the green room. We were kind of mulling over the message. And, and there was something, uh, you know, I didn't connect. That when we were first married, Mark had, Mike had this Healy. What kind of one? Austin Healy 3000. Have you ever seen Father of the Bride? He had a sports car. That's what Mike had. I mean, it was hot. It really went. So, uh, you know, we Mike was laid off his job the first year we married. We didn't have any money. And his dad called and said that he had sold his Healy. We want, he had asked him to sell it. And Mike came to me and we had no money. I mean, you know, I think I bought him a Dr. Pepper for Christmas that year or so. <laughs> I, it's true. You know, I mean, that's how wealthy. We had no Christmas tree, but, you know, a bottle of Dr. Pepper. And so, anyway, and, and uh, Mike said, The Lord has spoken to me that I am to give all of that money for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Anybody have a Baptist background here? Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Oh, you know, I wrote about her in my book, Women Rise Up. You need to get that book, and the heroines of the faith. So anyway, but she worked in China. She lived and died. There's quite a story. And uh, so we gave for the Chinese and, you know, in memory of Lottie Moon. Well, Mike was just saying to me, honey, don't you realize the favor we have in mainland China? And I had never connected that. Uh, how, you know, I mean, when we were over in mainland China, we found out that there was 41 pages in Chinese about me. Positive. You know, and <laughs> it's always nice. It's not always like that. But I stopped reading that other joke, okay? So anyway, but you know, and, and the, the the party officials, they had been reading about this. I mean, who knew, you know? And so I got just the favor in Asia and the favor with the Chinese people. And we love the Chinese people. We love the Koreans. We just have a heart for Asia. And so, you know, I want to say to you, there are seeds you have sown that you do not know. God is even right now, this moment, working out for your good. Such an extraordinary story. And I end with this story. One time I was preaching at Angela's Temple, uh, which was Amy Symbol McPherson's church and uh, in Los Angeles. And I was standing on the platform. And the Lord began to speak to me about Sister Amy. And so that afternoon I went and studied. I thought, well, there's something about Sister Amy in China I couldn't get off of my mind. So I studied and I found out that Sister Amy, when, when she was a young woman, had married the love of her life, Robert Simple. And they went to uh, China together. And Robert got very ill, and he died within a few months that they were there. And she, and she had a little baby. And she, I think she was about 19. She was quite young. She made her way back home. And there was no fruit at all from their ministry in China. I mean, only sorrow. So she came home, she remarried, and it didn't work out well. But finally, she became one of the greatest healing evangelists we ever know. In fact, her church, Angela's Temple, when she pastored it, had a tithe. There was 250,000 people in Los Angeles, and she had a 25,000 member church. She had a tithe of the population of LA. And so I began to meditate, and the Lord began to say this to me. Sometimes he speaks to me kind of in a riddle. He says, Cindy, I never forget a seed. I never forget one seed. And so I was reading about Sister Amy, how she went and she preached 
in San Jose, California, and there was a young girl, nine years old, who got saved named Yuldine Utley. And this Yuldine became one of the child evangelists. See, there's about a hundred child evangelists that came out of her ministry. And they were preaching all over. And uh, so Yuldine was preaching. And when she was around, I think, about 15 years old, she was preaching in Madison Square Gardens in New York. And there was a young man that came that night. And he was a very liberal theology. He was going to a very liberal um, seminary there in New York. He'd come from mainland China. Brilliant, brilliant. And his name was John Sung. Has anybody heard of John Sung? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Good. I'm so glad somebody has. The preacher. Yes, he was. And so, anyway, he got gloriously saved under her preaching. And so he went back to seminary telling everybody about Jesus. And he was so radically changed, they put him in an insane asylum. It's a true story. For six months, he was in the insane asylum. And finally, some friends got him out, and he went back to China. And before he landed in China, he threw away all the medals and everything he'd gotten, except the proof of his doctoral degree, you know, to show his father. And he began to preach. One year, he wrote a check to God for 100,000 souls for the new year. And he got it. The evangelistic bands he started changed China. They changed uh, the Philippines. They changed Malaysia. Uh, all these areas around. He was the greatest evangelist China had ever known. And probably even to this day, the greatest evangelist. I heard about him when I was praying in the Forbidden City in Beijing. And so I want to say to you, the Lord suddenly said to me, I told you I never forget a seed. And I saw it. The love of her life, Sister Amy's, was planted in China. And the anointing of that boomeranged back upon her. And Yuldin Yutli was saved. And in God's economy, he saw that John Sung went to that meeting at Madison Square Gardens. And from his seed, China was harvested. Clap your hands. I was preaching at the House of Prayer Radiance on the Sunset Boulevard. And they had been praying for many years, you know, right there on Sunset Boulevard, some of those expensive... Um, uh, property in LA. They prayed. They had the Hustler Club across from them. They prayed and prayed. Now they're going to tear the thing down and build a hotel. You know. So I was telling this story there, and all of a sudden, Jonathan Nye is his name. He raised his hand and he said, "I think it was my great grandmother was saved under the preaching of John's son, and I am a product." And then there was this church in Mott Auditorium where Lou Engle came out of. And so I was telling this to John Lowe, John and Evelyn Lowe. And he said, my, I think it was his grandmother, great-grandmother, were saved under that preaching also. And so he, you understand this? His grandfather got saved under the preaching of John's son. And that seed boomeranged back to Los Angeles through those two men who are now preaching the gospel in L.A. where Sister Amy had her church. Put your hands together. It's multiplication. It's multiplication. You stand up and as I close, I want to pray for you. And I want to pray that you're going to have new faith. And you know, I, I, you know, I wasn't... I wasn't doing this for that reason, but, uh, you know, this envelope that you have, I want you to take it, I want you to pray about it. You know, there's some, what you're going to get, there's some places that are good dirt. Okay, if you're going to, you want to harvest, you don't just throw your seed in the parking lot. You have to throw it where the seed has been ground, has been tilled, and where it's open. And I know you know that or you wouldn't be here tonight. But God wants you to go higher, and God wants to help you go higher. And God wants to give you greater faith. And some of you need to sow for your breakthrough. And you need to write on your envelope what you want for your breakthrough. What? Name your seed. That's right. When you give. Oh. Who doesn't have an envelope? Okay. Oh, yeah. There's a whole table over here. Some. 
Okay.